So this is my, the following presentation will be in Arabic. <laughs> Shukran. That's it. <laughs> the following presentation will be in English. <laughs> Uh, actually, uh, I, uh, I have made a uh, commitment to uh, learn this beautiful Arabic language within one year. Uh, I love uh, the language, and I've fallen in love with uh, the people and the richness, the dignity of the people here in a very short period of time. Can you hear me okay? Yes. So, um, I have been to more than 80 countries. I travel about 500,000 air miles a year. Um, we have launched this work, uh, or work similar to this, we have uh, done Dignity Days in 50 countries. We have uh, launched this work in South Africa. But in South Africa, we were met with uh, a defeatist uh, attitude in some ways, uh, a sense that it was not possible, that people wouldn't work together, that people did not want to volunteer. We have succeeded in South Africa. 1,500 uh, volunteers uh, in a short period of time, 100 partners. All of the fears were wrong. But we had a challenge there. In Morocco, uh, we have a partnership in Morocco. Very proud of that. In Morocco, it's complicated because they have so many interests that they are dealing with. In Saudi Arabia, it's simple. Uh, because of the way in which the country uh, has been led in 100 years, it's simple. Either people like you because you're authentic, or they don't, uh, because you're inauthentic. And I had no problem when I got off the plane feeling an instant bond with this country. Uh, I felt a sense of dignity uh, in its people, a sense of mission and purpose, but most importantly, uh, hope, and a sense that uh, even those who are doing well were concerned about the least of these. This is unique, and it's uh, something I, I find rare. Even uh, in traveling to places like Norway and Finland, um, the indifference to the poor you can feel. There's no indifference here. It's rooted in your culture. Why is this important? Because it's context for why I think you're going to be so successful here. I um, have something shocking to say, maybe. I think the government here has done a great job in over 100 years in forming an institutional structure for this country in some ways has done such a great job, in some areas maybe has done too much. It's now time for individuals to lead. It's now time for companies, companies like SEDCO, to step up and do their part. The product in this country is not just oil. I would argue the real product are its people. The real asset, the unleveraged asset, the untapped assets um, are the assets of the people of Saudi Arabia itself. This is what's going to give you lift for your future. And so in that way, I think that what SEDCO has done is not just launch a program. They have potentially created a new approach to leadership for this country and the MENA region, region and by extension the world. My point is made by a statistic. Within conservatively, uh, conservatively meaning if you make a conservative estimate on the statistic, within 10 to uh, 20 years, the population in this region will be 60% under the age of 25. It's a very powerful number. It's a companion statistic. Within the same period of time, you'll need 100 million jobs. Now, I want to let that sit in with you for a moment. We know the population of Saudi Arabia, about 27 million. You start adding up country here, country there. It doesn't take 
genius to figure out that 100 million is a very, very, very big number. You're not going to get 100 million jobs from government. You're not going to get 100 million jobs from major businesses. The only practical strategy is a massive, massive focus on entrepreneurship, on small business, on what I call self-employment projects, people who basically take care of themselves. And even in the largest economy in the world, the U.S. economy, half of all jobs come from employee, employers with 100 employees or less, a little known fact. There's only 967 businesses in the largest economy in the world that employ more than 10,000 people. I'll repeat that. In the largest economy in the world, $16 trillion, the U.S. economy, 300 million people, we all know the numbers. There's only 967 businesses that employ 10,000 people or more. 99.9% .9 of all jobs are 1,000 employees or less. Half of all jobs are 100 employees or less. This is what's driving the economy. So it could be argued right now that I, yes, need to learn Arabic, and I actually look forward to it because it's a beautiful language. But it could be argued that everybody needs to be bilingual. But the second language that everybody needs to understand actually is not English or Arabic. It is the global language of money. What's going on in the world, whether you're in the MENA region or whether you're in, by the way, the 100 million job number I gave you was a MENA region statistic. The 60% of the age of 25 number I gave you was a MENA region statistic. But think about what's going on everywhere in the world right now. The crisis in Europe, the crisis in America, the crisis in Latin America, the crisis in Africa, the crisis in the MENA region. It's all economics. So let me put it very bluntly. If you don't understand the global language of money and you don't have a bank account, and it's, it's, it's no coincidence, uh, I think, that these gentlemen, uh, their father, their, their family, uh, the family uh, uh, business uh, was rooted in banking. Uh, that if you don't understand the global language of money today and you don't have a bank account, it could be argued that you're an economic slave in the world today. Did that translate properly? I'll repeat it if need be. I'll, I'm going to repeat it just to make sure everybody got it accurately. If you don't understand the global language of money, financial literacy, and you don't have a bank account, then you have no control of your life or your aspirations or the ability to achieve some level of self-determination and freedom. It is arguably a case that you're actually an economic slave. And so to set people free, to give them the opportunities, uh, to allow them to connect into entrepreneurship, to connect into small business, to connect in, in the ability to really help uh, countries like Saudi Arabia, to become a role model for the MENA region and then a role model for the world, to take all this young energy and make it positive. The young energy is not a negative thing. It's a positive thing, but it has to be focused. It has to be empowered. It has to be trained in a way in which it's practical. And you can't expect people to go to college and graduate and everybody to go to work for a big business. It's just not a rational approach. But everybody can graduate or aspire to open their own business. Setco was once a small business. Now it's 20 businesses strong. They've invested in more than that, but they actually control 20 businesses, as I understand, correct? But this was once an idea. This was once uh, uh, the thoughts of uh, a few entrepreneurs and hard work. And now they're employing people. They're creating jobs. They're, they've actually literally created what you're sitting in today and helping the, making Saudi Arabia great. This is my vision for the country and for our people. Uh, and I think that the company deserves to be commended uh, for being a role model for other corporate leaders to follow. Um, so this is uh, the substance of my remarks, uh, is that this is not just a financial education program. It's not a financial literacy initiative of one company. It is potentially a spark of a movement. 
for the entire country and for corporate leaders and others who want to make a difference. I'll end with this. Let me ask each of you, put uh, down your titles as members of the media for a moment. Let me ask you a question. Do you want a legacy? I'm actually, I'm actually talking to you. <laughs> Do you want a personal legacy that says you were here? Of course you do. Nobody wants to go through life and pay bills and show up for work and uh, buy things and sell, and sell things and uh, transact in life but not live life. No one wants to leave here and not have an imprint that they were here. Everybody wants to know that they were here and everybody wants to know that they made a difference. Can I get a general agreement on that? Mm -hmm. So the royal family know how they're going to achieve that. In some ways, they already have. Entrepreneurs that created this company know how they're going to achieve that. In some ways, they already have. The college universities in your country know how they're going to achieve that. In some ways, they're doing that right now. But how does the average person do that? The average person now can go and take this curriculum and go into a school, go into a mosque, go into a community, and change someone's life. I will leave you with a hopefully impressive, impressive statistic. You may say, you may be thinking, John, how can one person make a difference? How can we really make a change in this country? There's a statistic uh, in the book, The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. Those who know me will hear this a lot from me. It's the best-selling book around the world. The, the University of Illinois study proved that it's 5% role models every community stabilizes. Now, the, the magic of that number is that it's not 80% of role models or 50% of role models or even 10% of role models that stabilizes the community. It's just 5%. Hope is so powerful that all you need is a super minority of it to change the world. Why do you want to be a banker or a journalist or a blogger or a professional, because you saw a banker or a blogger or a journalist or a professional. You saw it, and so you wanted to be it. And that is as simple as this model is. It give you the, the tools and the capabilities and the best practices and the role models to change your world and by becoming the role models that you want to see in your the change you want to see in your country. Everybody can change the world. Everybody can become the future for Saudi Arabia. This is a chance uh, for you to actually create a legacy, a living legacy, everyone in here um, for your future. And I'm very proud to be here and very proud to be associated. Thank you very much.